Hi, welcome to Painting with Shauna on Thursdays. I'm so glad you made it. I have to thank my youngest son. I complained enough that he said, Mom, just get a, an Ethernet cord, which is not as, as easy as it seems with Apple. I had to order a dongle and it arrived yesterday. I mean, I ordered it last Thursday night, so I'm pretty impressed. Anyway, I'm all plugged in. I'm hoping that that means there will be no glitching and no strangeness happening in my live stream. And uh, this is awesome. Thank you, Sean. So if you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the follow button on Facebook. And I have a weekly newsletter. This week I showed some of the background of what I did in preparation and I showed my color palette that I've mixed that's all right here beside me, ready to work with. And, um, and a sweet little uh, bird that I saw last Thursday after I bailed out after, because uh, it was a beautiful day last Thursday. So I went out and just hung around and did things, went outside and hung around outside. Um, those beautiful days are, are very numbered here in the subarctic of Yellowknife. Anyway, we're gonna get going here. Um, I have um, uh, everything set up and I'm going to move the camera so that you can just see it and we'll get going. So if you're here, say hello. Um, I've got both chats open. So I thought what I'd do today is I'd show you, just one second, I need to move this light so that it's in the right place. Everything has its, its place. Okay. So I went out last spring and I just took pieces of reed and I put them, put, took my color charts with me and I matched up their local color so that when I came to do this uh, painting, I know that the local color of a dry reed is, um, what is it? Oh, here, I can read it here, uh, is a 10YR, which is just a little bit into, more into the red. Um, into the orange, just as it's moving away from yellow into orange. Uh, value seven, chroma four. So it had a fair amount of chroma compared to what I normally work with in nature. Uh, the dirty ones were a chroma, they were a value six, which means they were a little darker and they were less chromatic. And the wet ones were um, actually more towards orange. So they're more, you can see that there's more red in this and it's a value five. So it, of course was darkened because it's wet. And then I just jumped up a couple of values and down a couple of values to create the light and the dark tone that I can work with and I can mix in between. Then we have the pintail ducks. Unfortunately for me, pintail ducks are not really good at um, coming into my studio and sitting still so that I could actually match them up. So. This is my breast approximation using the photo. Um, and so here is the female. And you'll notice that the male, here's the male, he has a much lighter, he's much lighter and much darker. And in fact, that's where we're gonna start painting today is in the lightest spot and in the darkest spot. And the lightest spot and the darkest spot to me is in that pintail. Now I had to do a lot of work on this image to get it to where I wanted it to be. So I would, um, if you are not signed up for my newsletter, next week you'll see what the original picture looked like, the, the two steps to get to where this is where I'm happier with it. So I'm just, when I do a color study, um, I, this is only my second one. This was my first one. And what it allowed me to do was to, to put in the simple shapes. I wasn't putting in too much details. Um, and it allowed me to realize that the blues that the gray, the blues that I had been using were too gray. And so I could make the change then when I went to my bigger painting. 
that I liked the sky, I liked the elements of it, but it, it gave me something visually to look at. And uh, this is like wonderful before you start leaping into a bigger painting. So let's leap in and get going. So the darkest part, let's find the darkest part on that, uh, on that male drake pintail, northern pintail. Um, I can see that it's kind of here. There is a dark part there. Back here on the back of the neck is a dark part. And where else on the drake? Um, and well, that's a little bit lighter. Let's go one step lighter. So when I finish this color study, I will put it in front of me and I will ask some very simple questions. What worked? What didn't work? And um, what changes I need to make? So I'm just going to simply put in Um, using this similar size brush, I can control it to a certain level. Um, I'm just going to continue to put in different parts of this bird and build it up. Again, I'm not worried about perfection. I'm going to mix colors as I need to darken them between each other. And I can tell already this is probably not brown enough. It's not chromatic enough. So let's see if I can move forward and borrow from the female. This, yeah, there we go. That's better. Now the, the burnt sienna in behind gives it a sort of a wonky uh, thing to mix, to measure against but you know yeah so I said there would be no technical problems I see that something's happening with Facebook but I think Facebook struggles so now let's get the lightest part in I'm gonna bring that down and bring that all the way around with just the edge of my brush and bring it in and There. Get that. Yeah, there's the rest of that white in shadow. Okay. Okay, I'm liking that so far. This should take me a few hours to do because I want to be mindful. I'm not rushing this. I'm just taking my time and looking back and forth. And you, you see that I have the image next to me. That's I'm working sight size. This is exactly the same size as this one. Um, I just, uh, for the sake of expedience, I traced it because that would be faster. So we're just going to put in the, the shapes that I'm seeing on this bird and then we will work on to the next one. So a color study to me means that I can look at what is happening with the value relationships that I'm creating. Um, and I know that I can create um, a wider range of values and I will work with a wider range of values once it's larger because simply because it's larger. It works that way 
it's easier to see all the elements. Here I'm just trying to cover it up and get enough paint on to cover it so that it um, will be as close to what I want and I don't have to come back. I didn't worry about perfection of covering the last one. It was enough information. Okay, and then... Huh, interesting. What I love about painting birds that I haven't painted before is what I learn about their anatomy and how they they uh, stand out and how their shapes of their bodies and... Huh, no, my volume's not low, I don't think, Mom. I just, it's just on. Let me get ahead of this camera and just check. No, my, vol my volume's fine, Mom. So maybe it's just your uh, phone you need to turn it up a little bit. And then coming down here, and there's a slight shift of value there. Okay, and some more of that 8.1 mixed in with a little bit of the 8.2 just to bring the value down a little bit. And then I'm going to watch this shape because I didn't draw it in, so now I just draw it in with the brush. Okay, and it comes up here, and it comes there. I'm not going to worry about a ton of detail. I mean, it's just, it's too small. And I know there are people who work mini and work even smaller than this, and and they just go for the detail. I'm just, this is a color study. Get that in place, that shape. So I'm backing up to look to see where I'm at and see if there's any other places that have this value. And I can see that there's these shapes here that have that value. Yeah. There we go. And build that up. Then I have one that's sort of valued down a little bit more, so I'm going to mix it down a little bit, but not too far. And I'm going to bring it here. And I'm going to mix a little bit more down the value so that I can see the the uh, elements as they're sitting next to each other. That is definitely not the right color. The right value, but not the right color. I think I need to bring in more chroma in. And as always, it's time to spritz my, my watercolor paint, to, uh, my watercolor paint, my acrylic paint, so that I can uh, there we go. And then we'll take some of that dark. I figure this will take me three or four or five hours to do because I want to do a good job on it. And so I just take the time that it takes to do um, because the information that I'm learning that it gives me is really interesting and very helpful. some of that dark again and it comes up here and comes around here and I take some of the water off my brush and bring it down Now, what's interesting when we get there is the reflection will be darker. 
the reflection will be darker. And so um, everything I'm doing will be a value or so darker underneath in the reflection, which I find quite fascinating. Um, here. Later in. Okay, building up, building up. We're going to come in here. I have this shape here. It needs a little bit more brown in there, more uh, chroma, more color. Um, and oh, that goes lighter. Take that lighter at the end. Interesting. Okay. Slowly building up. Slowly, slowly building up. Let me bring some of that dark around here. comes away from the light. Now I'm not, I'm pretty certain I don't have all my values correct in this just because I'm just starting out with it and so my values will shift as I have more to compare to and as I get more covered then I can see better the values. Okay, a little bit of the darker brown and the value three. I see that here and I see it. Here's a value three. And there's all sorts of detail in here I'm not gonna worry about. I'm just going to make it a little lighter value as I move across the plane as the light is striking it. The sun on that day was pretty strong and so it created a um, very harsh lighting conditions. Pintails are um, a little bit shy so you take what you get and you're, you make it work. too much water on my brush and so it's not grabbing enough paint. Maybe I'm going to switch to a different brush. Maybe that's part of my problem is I need a softer brush. Okay, there we go. Now I can hold enough paint to get it in place and get that darkness showing. So the colors that I chose to use in this is um, yellow ochre, uh, yellow ochre and pretty well the whole thing except for the water is just yellow, it's three colors, yellow ochre, white, uh, well uh, Munsell grays, the gray tones, and cad red medium. So it's not a very diverse, other than the little bits of water that will be here, uh, color palette. So that should help it to be, um, to fit together better. By limiting, I mean, it just naturally limited itself. It wasn't that I limited the colors. The, the, just the image that I'm working from naturally limits it. The snow will be, have more blue in it, and it will have 
So we'll have a really interesting uh, combination of colors. Okay, and we're going to go back dark. Let's bring in these. And I know that they have light around them, but that's not my goal right now is to as it changes the plane a little bit and changes the value, I want to I want to notice those small changes if I can. They'll be easier to do in a large in a large painting, that's for certain. Oh, there's a dark area here. So you think you've got it sort of figured out and then when you start to compare shapes you realize you've missed some information. Okay, let's get that eye in there. I don't know if I've got a dark enough value for the eye in my palette because I only have it to a value three but yeah, no, that's going to have to be darker. That's going to have to be a value too. But I'll just get that shape in there for right now. And I'm going to use this value, which is probably not quite dark enough, but once I have everything else in place, I will be able to see it for the tip of his beautiful beak, which has a little bit of a blue-gray to it. Let's see if I can find a a little bit of blue that I can add into. Okay, I just grabbed a tube of paint and put a little bit of the blue in and I'm looking at the value. Uh, I'm going to say that it's around here. Okay. Isn't that the prettiest bill you've seen? Oh, I don't know. Maybe that uh, ruddy duck with his cerulean bill, bill was pretty amazing, I have to say. <laughs> what that I painted last year it was like, whoa, who even knew that ducks came so cool? So the female and male do share colors, but what I found really interesting is that the female um, has a, her, her lightest light is quite dark. She's, she needs to hide away, so she's quite interesting that way. Now the duck, this duck also has a cast shadow happening down on its neck. Does it? No, it's not a cast shadow. That's a reed from behind. Okay. I have to look at what you're seeing there. Is it? No, it's a reed. Okay. We'll not worry about the reed yet. I'm not into that space yet. I just want to build up what I'm looking at and, and get those values as close as I can get them. When this, I, I like to photograph birds when it's cloudy out. Um, a few weeks ago I sent a newsletter out and it showed what the bird looked like um, when I, um, the different ways, you know, with it backlit and with it, um, and there's a little touch of that down here too when it's backlit and when it's um, front lit and flat. And the other one was on a cloudy day. Cloudy days, the light is softer, it's more even, and you get richer saturation. Now when I do flowers, I'm not interested in cloudy days. I want, I want to have as much sunshine as possible because it's that dramatic light and 
and change that I'm looking for. Um, but when I'm working with birds, sunny days are actually harder to photograph them. And this was an intensely sunny day. So and, and with a camera, what it does is it super makes the whites really light and the darks really, really dark. And I had to do a whole lot of work on this image to get this to lighten up enough so that the birds popped forward. Okay, so we're getting a sense of that bird. Um, here's another lighter area there. And then we have some lighter areas around, and this brush is small enough I can just, just go around this, this a little bit to give it some shape and some bearings there. Okay. And every shape gives you inf more information. Oh, what's that? Oh, okay. Every shape gives you more information. Then you notice what the next shape is. There is some light popping through here that has to do with this. And then it comes around and it darkens up a little bit as it moves into this shape here. Okay, it's coming. Okay, I see that too here. I'm noticing that this line actually goes all the way up behind its head you know, I have to tell you that I adore pintail ducks. They are so, he is so beautiful. She is beautiful too in her, in her more quiet way, but he is just this elegant looking duck that I totally love to see and get close to. And, and it's not easy. They are really quite shy. So last year my goal was to get a, a good picture of a pintail and I got a, a couple adequate ones. This year I was out walking with a friend and they were hanging around in this area. And so I just uh, raced home and got my camera and came back and spent about an hour with them because I thought, well, you'll be gone soon, you know, spring will... And it was like May 15th and it was still, uh, the lake was still frozen solid and it was a late spring this year. Though I think you've heard me say that about 16 million times. Okay. I seem to have frozen. Get out of the way of the camera, Shauna. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We're just build these shapes, get the back on. Um, looking, thinking about what I'm seeing. Here's a shape that's light and goes this direction. Okay, are we starting to feel like we're getting, a, I mean, a really good sense of, of uh, I need more paint on my brush. Spritz everything. And I'm just going to come in and go around. Oh, I thought I was going to come in and do that. I need more paint. 
There we go. Now I've got some paint on my brush. And I'm just trying to hold the very edge of the brush to it um, to give the shapes that I'm seeing around each of these very beautiful longer feathers. Fill in all of these spaces with a lighter brown. Okay, they're not a um, they're not a colorful bird. In fact, I was just saying to my husband, when we go to Australia to visit our oldest son, I'm looking forward to painting the very colorful birds because I was, I'm always surprised, you know, since I got the Munzel book, I discovered that most of my colors were really too bright. Um, I think I must be an Australian painter <laughs> in my other life. So I'm uh, trying to bring down those those um the chroma the color to a more realistic look and it's it's you know it's not actually that easy to do i'm still playing with the idea of um what i'm doing actually i'm starting to get prepared for after my show okay Let's get those that lighter in. A little bit more chroma into it. A little bit more dark into it. Okay, and then fill in this here. Fill in that shape there. Okay, I think that we've got a fairly good start with the uh, with the the um, let's do this around here and around here with the pintail male drake. Too light of a value there. I'm just going to come and smush it in a little bit with a soft brush. Okay, well, let's go. I'm not going to worry about the female and all of her patterning. She has a lot of patterning, which will be totally fun to paint. That's the kind of stuff I love to paint. But what I'm looking for is her overall values. And I may put a few of the details in, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time. Where's her lightest parts here? The sun is really striking here. And it's coming around. And it's darkening up a little here as it comes around. But it's not darkening up that much. A little bit lighter than that. Okay, there we go. And come around. And his, his actual feather uh, is almost the same value, so it's going to be a lost edge there. And bring it down here, and we're going to get into darker. I'll probably put a little bit of the patterning in, but not a ton.
whatever. Okay, so let's just keep on going here. So she has some really pretty colors on her that are more, I mean, they're subtle shades, but I just put that in there. Bring that over here. So I can see that it is darker shapes up here. I mean, there's lighter shapes in there, but I really want to get sort of that feel of it's moving to darker as it moves away from the light. And their, their wings are crossed over, but you don't see the other one. There's another one underneath, but it's quite a bit darker. I'm just gonna move that wing underneath and bring that darker around here. And then I'm gonna to blend together the other two. So I'm gonna dry my brush off really well and take that sort of in between value. So I'm between value uh, four and value, um, value eight. So I just wanna bring that value down because the paint is still damp, I can come in and just dry my brush off well and then move it around and soften the edges into each other so that the, the dark goes into the light. Oops, grab some more paint. The dark goes into the light, the lighter value and, and smooths in. Okay. Um, her head is pretty much the same color as his is. Here with the middle value. And then, there's enough of that on there. Then I'm going to lighten it a little bit. So this is going from a five to a, a bit of a six here so and then up to a fairly light value I would say probably a seven here again it'll be easier once um, all the information is in place to see if I've got it too dark or too light Okay, and then the darker in the front. Remembering that this female does not have the same darknesses as this male. We don't want to um, be getting her too dark too quickly. Okay, I'll just move that around. And there. There's all sorts of cast shadows being put onto the birds because they're in the reeds. So I'm going to put that shape in there so that you can see the cast shadow of, from the reeds that is impacting the, the female's head. She has a little dark up here. And the darkness comes around and pops up over the head. I'm going to clean this brush off, dry it off really well. And I'm just going to... Huh. I forgot to put my alarm back on. just going to keep on trucking here. That's darker than that. It's almost as dark. Just to darken that up. 
And as soon as you get the darker in and the lighter in, you can see where you're not got your value light enough. So I really can tell right here, this, this wing is much lighter. And it comes up and there's all sorts of little patterns in here. So I'm just going to put some dots in there. Now her beak is not near as pretty as his. Let's see if this is the right value. I might have it too dark. No, it could be a little lighter. Just pull a little bit of lightness onto there. Now, when you look at the original pictures that when I send them next week, what you're going to notice is there's a reed that actually is blocking her uh, her beak and I've removed it because I've got a new program that's help that, that's very helpful so I can remove it darken it down and bring it up here and finish her beak. So the computer pr program extrapol extrapolated what the beak was supposed to look like by what was around it. I don't know, I don't think she has the same dark r ridge that the, uh, that the male drake has. I, but I haven't done, gone and done any, any uh, work yet to figure that out. Okay, well, oops, we're missing a part there. What are we missing? Yeah, okay. Just looking at her and realizing that I miss the shape that is moving away over here. Get that in place. So that's a pretty simple shape there. Let's see if we can uh, bring some darker darkness in and move it around a bit. Okay. I'm happy with that. Now I think the next shapes I want to put in are the snow around because those are lighter shapes because I've lightened them quite a bit. So let's get the snow out here. I figured I already got all the snow I need because I uh, I built it already, but what I, okay, that's not going to work. That can go. Get the snow that's up and functioning here. I've got all of these um, uh, covered containers that say what they are inside. And uh, so I'm kind of moving around. Different elements of paintings will have different colored, uh, different uh, containers. So the snow has one container, the, the, uh, uh, the drakes are, the ducks are in another, the reeds are in another. So I'm just going to, let's get some of this in here. I'm going to get a bigger brush because now we're not working on a little part. We're working on a much bigger part. So let's get a bigger brush and see what that means. And it seems so light compared to, and that will help me to frame where I'm going with this snow. I may choose to make it a little darker because what do I want to stand out? Probably not the snow, probably more the, uh, the ducks.
I'm just building it up, looking at the shape, thinking about what I'm seeing. How far does this snow go? It goes just beyond the drake. So I'm looking up and down to see how far. This would not be how I would work on a, um, on a regular painting. I, um, I tend to work from back to front and the bird doesn't always mean that it's going to be the first one done. Um, but it just, with this one, I'm not so worried about it. Nope, it's way too blue still. So let's take a darker value, take some of that Munzel gray to neutralize it and bring it down here. Still a little bit. Yeah. Okay, and now we have, there's a little bit of dark in here, and this comes angled down. What time is it here? Okay, we have 15 minutes. And I love that there's this little edge of snow. There's all sorts of different values in there, so let's get some darker values going here of the snow. I've just taken the snow that I'm working with for um, for the sculpture and I'm just sort of tweaking it by adding a little bit more gray and neutralizing it further. Okay and I'm trying to think of how far beyond it is here. So take that. Neutralize it a little bit more with that that Munzel gray because I don't want it. I may choose to have it lighter later, but right now I'm thinking about it. I don't want it to be first thing you notice. We don't have the same values as a printed paint does not come in the same values as what you can get with printing. And so that just really means that you're working in relation to everything else that's on your palette. You're not working in relation to what the image shows you. You you're you know, you want to make it look lighter, you want to make it look um darker, you know, like that in relation to each other, it all works out really well. Okay, so there we go. Bring that back. Bring that shape forward. And then there's a shape here that looks like it's pretty much the same, that same bluey gray. Now, the one thing I want to make sure I don't end up with is um, ridges here because they capture the light and they do weird things too. So I'm just going to take a soft brush and bring it along and clean up all the light areas to make sure that there's no ridges at all. And then I'll bring a different brush for the darker areas another one of the Robert Simmons soft ones and just gently touch and make those ridges disappear. Clean the brushes off, dry them well. Because I'll probably use them again to get rid of ridges. Okay. So what do you think so far? Okay, now there is some snow back here. So let's put, it's, let's get that, what value is that? 6.5, let's get a more gray in there. When snow is rotting, it is a much different color than when it's colder in the winter. When it's cold, cold in the winter and the snow is pristine and it really captures the light, but when it's rotting, it starts to um, 
not capture the light the same way. And it's a different color, like it doesn't capture the sun the same way as if it is a um, during a, a colder period of time. Now, I'm getting into a small area. I'm going to go grab a small brush again. I always find it easier to work. Some people are able to work with the same brush and do all sorts of amazing detail and I'm not that skilled. Okay. Just clean up this edge and clean up this edge. Okay. Then we have more snow in there and it's darker and it's grayed out in, in behind. So we want to bring in some of that grayer tone. As, and we don't want to have it exactly the same value as the, as the, um, as her beak because it's actually a little darker in behind. So let's just make it a little darker so her beak stands out. And it could be that her beak needs to be lighter too, which, you know, we will work on. So that would be easy to do. Just bring in a little bit more light to this beak. Okay, we are just a few minutes away from wrapping it up this week. I actually plan to continue to um, record this and then put out a, a little video to go with it um, at a later date. But um, I'm getting ready for a show, so recording is the easy part. All the editing is quite not the easiest part at this point. Okay. Put the darker eyes in. I even like that her eyes are a different shape than his and has patterning around it that's different than his. So that's fascinating to me. Okay, let's see if we can... I'll have to get back to let's finish off the snow here we still have more snow to do I can see that we have some snow right here as it comes across and is a little bunch there there is snow in behind him comes in a and then it comes down to darker even down here there is I would say about value five Munzel in there just to uh, I'm going to bring that here now there's variation in there that we will uh, come back and worry about it later and it comes up and then goes flat down again okay we're getting a handle on this snow and what it's doing and how we expect it to move and what the values are. And there's a back there and it comes through there. Oops, I'm right onto the reed. I 
come on to the reed here. So let's just make that paint, push it forward so it disappears out of the reed. It's going to be interesting to see what, uh, what decisions come out of this at the end. Is the snow lighter? Is it darker? Mind you, it's got variations in it. Is the bird lighter? Is the bird darker? Well, we have some snow down here that needs to be... put in place. So we have some lighter snow in here. Again, I'm going to bring those brushes. I'm going to dry them really well because and get rid of those ridges. I don't want ridges any place, any place. So if I can do that and get rid of the ridges and move the paint around a little bit, that's not something I'm going to complain about. Okay. Okay, I think we have a little bit more snow to do. Yeah, we still have some more snow to do, so I'll continue with the snow. Except I want a smaller brush because now I'm moving into a smaller area. Okay. So the snow is also in cast shadows and uh, from the reeds. So that's creating some interesting variations in the background as it comes darker here and then and then I can see that it's lighter here. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of that lightness in. Just enough to say, there it is. I'm not going to... Okay. I'm going to spritz this, close it, and then I think it's time to wrap up our, our, uh, our day. Okay, so we got a start on it. Um, I will continue to work on it. I am going to videotape um, the rest of this and create a speed video. Probably won't be out till November because my show is not until October 29th. And on October 29th, I will be um, doing a virtual show here in, uh, in my home upstairs we'll have it set up like a gallery and uh whew, that's a lot of light um and i welcome you all to come and join in on the festivities you'll have to bring yourself a glass of wine and some cheese and crackers because unfortunately with covid uh we're not able to have a show in person which i you know it's actually quite sad for me because by the time i get to my show i'm like I need people, but there you go. It is the way it is. So thank you for joining me. Next week, this will be done and I will have a good start on this painting by the time I see you next Thursday. So take care and have a great week. Bye.